My name is Kylie, and my husband Kyle and I have four daughters. Our two oldest daughters were diagnosed with GM1, the juvenile form of the disease, about two and a half years ago. Kinley, our nine-year-old, is very compassionate, social, and silly. She's always wanted to be a doctor, perhaps because she spent so much time with them. Kennedy is our six-year-old and is undisputedly the princess of the family. You can find her dancing and singing to her favorite Disney songs. We first started noticing delays with Kinley's development when she was around three years old. We could tell she had speech delays and she was also very clumsy, especially for a kid whose parents were extremely athletic. By age four, we knew something was definitely wrong. She wasn't just having delays. It was like one day she could do things and the next day she couldn't. In addition to speech therapy, we started occupational therapy and we began seeking a diagnosis. We went from specialist to specialist for evaluations. Then Kennedy started showing similar signs of the same speech delays when she turned three and we suspected there was something genetic at play. It took us over two years to find a diagnosis. Of the many symptoms of GM1 that the girls deal with on a daily basis, the three that stand out the most are communication, mobility, and cognition. Both of our girls are very difficult to understand verbally, especially when the context of their discussion is unknown. They love to come home from school to tell us about their day, but oftentimes we're unable to understand what they're trying to tell us. Simple things like telling us their stomach hurts or they have a headache is nearly impossible for them to communicate. It's obvious that communication and speech is gonna be the first of their major abilities that they will lose. Mobility wise, the girls can still walk and run unassisted, though it doesn't come without a lot of bumps, bruises, blood, and tears. Falls are common and scary at times. When we go to new playgrounds, they want so badly to be able to climb and play like the normal kids, um, but are not able to. They crawl or they scream, help me, when trying to navigate areas of the playground that even our unaffected two-year-old can do independently. While Kinley was once able to read words, write her name, and even do math, academics are no longer a priority for our girls. Instead, we're more concerned about them wandering off or running into the street without looking for cars. Things that most parents worry about less and less as their children get older are things that we worry about more and more. Kennedy finished kindergarten last year, and while her symptoms are still in their infancy, she has started to realize that she's unable to do a lot of the things her classmates can. She cannot write, read, or hold her pencil. She cannot even put her jacket and shoes on independently. This leads to confusion, frustration, and anxiety for both the girls and us. Just as we learn to live with the current symptoms, they regress farther. The future is an extremely scary prospect. We know they could live to be in their teens, 20s, or perhaps even 30s. We don't know, however, what their quality of life will be at any point. Will they be able to walk? Will they be able to talk? Will they even know who we are? And honestly, the scariest thing for us as parents is whether or not we will know when they've regressed to the point where medical intervention perhaps isn't in their best interest. One of the most frustrating aspects of juvenile GM1 is that it doesn't just limit their future, but it robs them of their past abilities as well. Explaining to a child why they're not able to do things that they were once able to do is heartbreakingly impossible. Comforting them even though they can't tell you that they're upset because their friends can do things that they cannot. The simplest things that used to make us extremely happy, like hanging out with our friends and family, oftentimes can be emotionally difficult now. Seeing kids who are typical can really make you realize how far gone your child is. And though you're still so happy that they're here with you, Things like celebrating the girls' birthdays is bittersweet 
because you find yourself mourning the past, incredibly grateful for the day, but so scared and nervous for what the future holds. To pour salt on the wound, a diagnosis of GM1 also comes with the reality that there's no approved cure, no approved treatment, and really no plan of action for caring for them. And for us, that's just unacceptable. We know that while there is no treatment and no cure yet, there is hope. Hope for Kinley and Kennedy and hope for all of these brave children living with GM1.